Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel called Duo Decimal Division. My name is Eric Larson and today I'm going to answer the question, why do numerals look the way they do? Or why do they have the shapes that they do? So the reason that they have the shapes that they do is because somebody designed them that way. And that's what I'm going to explain to you in this video. I'm going to show you the geometric pattern that our numerals are based upon. So recently I've been sort of embarked on a study of dual decimal math and base 12 geometry. And it's been in this exploration that I discovered why our numerals look the way that they do. So when you look on the wall behind me here, you can see a whole bunch of different designs and fonts of the various numerals. And the question arises, which is the right one? Which is the original version or is there even an original version of these different numerals? How do we know whether the number seven is supposed to have a line through the middle or not? Or what's the right way to draw the numeral for the number three? And that's actually something else I'll just mention, the difference between a number and a numeral. The number is the idea or concept that we have in our mind about a specific amount of something. And the numeral is the symbol that we use to represent that number. We write that numeral down and then we can convey that idea to somebody else. So the, the numerals you see on the wall behind me here are a variety of different fonts and designs. And what I'm going to show you in this video is what the original versions are or what the original versions are based upon. Basically, it's a series of circles. Because when you look at the numerals, you realize that there's basically two ingredients to their design, straight lines and circles. So I'm going to show you the series of circles that the numerals are based on that someone used to create the designs that we now call the Western Arabic numerals. All right, so this is the geometric pattern that I'm talking about. And as you can see, it is a series of circles. More precisely, it is a series of consecutive square root radius circles. And what that means is that when you look at the first innermost circle, you can see that it has a radius of one. And then the second circle has a radius of the square root of two. The third circle has a radius of the square root of three and so on. And we can prove that by applying the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are two sides of a right angle triangle. So we're going to start here and make that our, our length of a. And we're going to add this amount here, which that's our b side. So one squared plus one squared equals one plus one equals two. So c squared is two, c becomes the square root of two. So this length here we just created is this that's our c that's the square root of two so now we draw our next circle and with the radius of the square root of two and we see that it connects here on the x-axis and that becomes our new length of a so now a is the square root of two squared equals two plus one is three we add the one now we have c becoming the square root of three we draw another circle then we add another one we draw another circle, add another one, and so on and so on. So that shows you the inner logic of this particular series of circles. And I haven't been able to actually find this particular diagram on the internet, but if you were to look up root rectangles, you'd come across a diagram that looks like this, where it just shows sort of a slice of this series of circles. And it shows you how to calculate these individual square root lengths, square root of two, square root of three, square root of four, the actual lengths, but it doesn't always mention that those are actually radiuses of circles. So that's the inner logic of this series of circles. And now I'm gonna show you why someone would choose this particular geometric pattern to base the design of numerals upon. So here we go, I'm gonna start with the numeral that represents the number two. Okay, so now we're just going to look a little bit more closely at the relationship between the second circle and the grid beneath. So the first thing that we're going to notice is that it is connecting on that grid on four lattice points. And lattice points are those spots where those lines are crossing each other. So all of these are called lattice points. And if we follow that circle around the grid, we notice that it's connecting on one, two, three, four lattice points. And so what we're going to do now is simply trace some of those lines. We're going to start by tracing that top arc of the circle. Then we're going to connect these two points just by drawing a line across the diagonal. And then I'm going to trace that bottom line there also. And there we have it. There's the symbol that represents the, the number two. That's the numeral. And we can see that it encompasses 
or it contains the length of two on that bottom uh, line right there. It also has a line here that has the length of two root two, and that top arc also is connected with a length of two. So you can see there's a whole lot of two going on within this particular numeral. And that's what I'm gonna show you for all the numerals, is that they all contain the length or the value of the length of the number that they represent and other qualities that kind of show the relationship between the square root of the number and the actual number. There's a lot of information kind of encoded within this symbol. And that's why someone decided to use this particular series of circles. Each circle has a different relationship to the grid beneath. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up because I'm gonna go through all the numerals for you. And I'm gonna go now to the numeral that represents the number five and see if we can, that same logic is gonna apply to that numeral as well. All right, so now we're gonna do the numeral that represents the number five. So you can see that I've already marked out the eight lattice points where this circle intersects the grid beneath. And what's interesting to note with all those points is that you can see a lot of potential for sort of straight lines and angles and even rectangles that could be drawn inside that square root five radius circle. So what the designers of this numeral did was they um, sort of commented on that fact by putting a right angle at the very top of the symbol. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come off again one of the lattice points. I'm gonna go up the length of two and then over the length of three. And so again, now we have a length of five incorporated into the symbol. And then again, I'm just gonna trace a portion of the circle. Let's go around here like this. That one didn't come out very well. Okay, and that's why the numeral five looks the way that it does. You see we have the length of two, the three and also four right here. And another aspect similar to the numeral two, if I was to draw a line coming through here and the center to that point, I'd hit this point here as well. And we would have a line that could be broken up into sections of square root of five. So again, there's a lot of five going on in there kind of thing. That's why the numeral five looks the way it does. Now I'm gonna jump ahead again and sort of speed things up a little bit. I think you're getting the idea. And I'm gonna do the numeral that represents the number eight. Okay, so the numeral that represents the number eight. So again, what I did is I made points here, the four points where the square root of eight radius circle intersects the grid. Those are the four points. And then I, as you can see, I just drew two circles with a diameter of four so that they hit all of those four points. And of course, there are no straight lines in there to add up to the length of eight. But if you look and count from the top of the symbol, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the bottom. So the numeral itself is the height of eight. And again, that only works when the circles and lines are all lined up in this particular pattern. If anything was bigger or smaller, it wouldn't equal out to a height of eight. That's very important to note. And again, that's the same for all the numerals. So we're just gonna go ahead now, and I'm gonna go to the symbol that represents the number nine. Okay, so here we are with the numeral that represents the number nine. And just to speed things up, I've drawn it on the board already, but I'll just go over again what I've done. I marked the four points where this uh, circle intersects the grid beneath, the four lattice points. Then we went off of one of those points, and I basically just drew a line that is nine units long. So again, that's where we get our nine. Uh, it, it fits the, the rules around the design of these numerals. That's why the numeral that represents the number nine looks the way it does. Okay, very simple. And you can see their proportions there as to the, you know, the ratio between the size of the circle and the length of that line. Okay, so what I'm gonna actually do is just show you another way to draw the, the numeral nine, and then we'll go back and do a few more. But this other way still fits the, uh, the, the rules, so to speak similar to how the eight was eight units tall, I'm gonna show you a, a number nine that is nine units tall. All right, so there's that second version of the number nine that I was talking about, or the numeral that represents the number nine. So I, what I did is I put a compass here and then drew that quarter circle and that has the length of six. So from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. So we have a, a numeral that is nine units tall. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna put my white board behind so you can see that a little bit better. That's why the second version of the numeral nine looks the way it does. Again, it's a pretty common version. Usually I would say nines are broken up into those two styles of one with the straight line, one with the curve. I don't know what you draw, how you draw your numerals. I just wanted to show you that other possibility. Basically the intention of this series of videos isn't so much to prove the exact right version of the numerals, but just to show that their overall design is based on that series of circles, the square root radius circle series, and then how the variations can come when contemplating those circles and the grid beneath and the relationship that's formed between them. So that's four numerals, two, five, eight, and nine. That's enough for the first video, I think. And you might be wondering, at the beginning of the video, I said a lot about the base 12 geometry and, and duodecimal math and this kind of thing. And then I showed you four examples where basically that didn't play a part. That's okay, that's exactly what I intended. That's why I put these gaps in here because I just wanted to show you the basic design and the basic sort of rules around the numerals and how they are designed when someone was thinking of creating shapes that represented the numbers. So now we're gonna go back, I'm gonna start or sort of restart with the numeral that represents the number six. And now we're gonna see you know, why the duodecimal element uh, matters or, or how it's very obvious in a sense that that's an important part of the ingredients as to why the numerals look the way that they do. So that'll be part two. I hope you can join me for that. Um, thanks for watching. And I really like to hear your comments, what you think so far, whether this is true, whether it makes sense, or does it seem like just a lot of coincidences? Does it seem like I'm just kind of making it up and it doesn't really follow? I'm really curious to hear your input. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.